Good morning. Welcome today to the services of Armed Church Christ. We're glad to have you with us. If you're visiting, we can't as our special guest. I'd like to ask you, as well as our regular members, to take a card from the pew in front of you and fill it out, drop it in the collections basket as you leave today so we can have a record of your attendance. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers in the audience. We, we appreciate everything that you do, both in your households and in the church. Couldn't operate without you either place. So thank you for all that you do. There are printed announcement sheets in the foyer. Remember to get one of those if you'd like to have one of those as you come in. Um, our sick list today, Keith Corcoran still not doing well at home. Uh, Trevor Dyer, a relative of Landon Olson, is, is in critical condition in North Dakota with COVID. Remember, as always, our shut-ins in your prayers, J.C. Hutchinson, Alton Rector, Martha Rye, Joe C., Norma Stanford, and Mary Thomas. June the 20th through the 23rd is a gospel meeting at the Kingwell Church of Christ. See the bulletin board for details about that. Next weekend, week from today, Vacation Bible School starts here at the Vernon Church. On, on Saturday the 26th, there'll be door knocking for VBS and uh, lunch will be served. Our services today will be led and singing by Brother Craig Snyder. Uh, led in prayer by Brother Tommy Chisholm. Lord's Supper will be handled by Brother Jason Burke. And our sermon will be delivered by our regular minister, Brother Eddie Finch. Remember our services this afternoon at 5, Wednesday afternoon at 7. Be back with us every opportunity that you have. Bow with me, please. Thank you again, our Heavenly Father, for this day and all its many blessings. I thank you now for this opportunity that we have to enter into this worship service. Please be with us that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray today especially for those of our number that are sick and shut in. Please be with them, be with those ministering to them, that they may have a good day and be returned to their places in life. Pray that your will be done in all things. Continue now with us on through this day. Forgive us for our sins as we repent and turn from them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The reading for the offering this morning will be Colossians 3, 17. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for every blessing that you give us and every opportunity you give us to go out. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray that as we give back to you this morning that we will do so with our hearts and our minds and the correct places and do everything in accordance to your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Prior to taking of the Lord's Supper, we'll sing the first verse. Psalm number 536, Psalm 536. Mm -hmm. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old For a world of lost sinners 
prepare to take the Lord's Supper this morning, we'll be reading John 19, 25 through 37. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, woman, behold your son. Then he said to, said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now a vessel full of sour wine was setting there, and they, fulfilled, and they filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a hossip, and put it to his mouth. So when Jesus had recovered the sour wine, he said, it is finished, and bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. Therefore, because it was the preparation day, and the body should not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus, and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water came out. And he who was, and he who has seen has testified, and his testimony is true. And he knows that he is telling the truth so that you may believe. For these things were done that the scripture should be fulfilled. Not one of his bones shall be broken. And again, another scripture says they shall look on him who they pierced. Let us pray. Dearly Father, we thank you for this loaf and what it represents. We thank you for your son and his willingness to die on the cross for our sins. And that the loaf represents his broken body. As we partake of it, we pray that we will do so in a manner pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. In a like manner, Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this fruit of the vine and the blood it represents. Pray that as we partake of it, we remember the sacrifice that was made upon the cross for our sins. In Jesus' name, amen.
pray. Father, we thank you so much for this day you've given us. Father, we thank you for Father's Day. We want to thank you for all the earthly fathers that have been good examples for the rest of us and, and taught us of a father's love. Father, we want to thank you for being a good father to us. So good that you gave your son, Jesus, so that we didn't have to, uh, so we could be forgiven for the things we've done. I want to pray today for all those names that's been mentioned here of our number. I want to pray you'll help them get back to their place in life. I want to pray that as a church here we'll be a big influence in our community. I want to pray that you'll motivate all of us to go out and, and look for opportunities to influence others and bring them to your, to your church here. I want to pray for Eddie and Landon. I want to pray that they'll have a good remembrance for their lessons today. I want to pray that the lesson will be put into our lives so we can be better servants for you. I want to pray all these things in your son in Jesus' name. Amen. The invitation song for this morning's service will be number 106. Well, today is Father's Day, and I think it would be appropriate if we were to talk about our Father somewhat, because Jesus talked a lot about His Heavenly Father. And the thing about Jesus, when He talked about His Heavenly Father, many times it got Him in trouble, because He talked to those about God being His Father, and how He was His Son, and there were individuals who couldn't stand that. They couldn't stand to hear Christ speak about his heavenly father from the standpoint of God being, him being the son of God. So therefore, they took up the conversation and time and began to devise a way to have him crucified, and they did. 
And there they killed the Son of God. So there we find Christ talk about his heavenly Father on many, many occasions. And one of the classic examples in which Christ talked about his heavenly Father is in Luke chapter 15 when he spoke about the parable of the prodigal son. Because it is there that he gives us a, the perfect picture of what his Father is all about. The perfect picture of how he deals with us at times. And that's what we want to see. How does God deal with us? Especially when it comes to that of the prodigal son. Let's begin reading in Luke 15 and verse 11 and 12. And he said, A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me a portion of the goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. So this man, this younger son, uh, may be somewhat like sometimes teenagers are today, or maybe how we were at one time, probably not things haven't changed a whole lot. It's how we act over the years. But here's this young man. He's wanting to go out and be his own man. He's wanting to get out there and do things his way and get his own place, have his own job, make his own money, come and go as he pleases. And, and well, he wants his freedom. That's what he's wanting. Well, here he has his idea. I'll go to my father. And I put this up to him and see if I can get my part of the inheritance. But I expect, I don't know, but I expect that this young man may have gone to his mother first and talked with her about this. Because, you know, I, sometimes kids will do that. They'll go to both parents at different times trying to see which one they can get the most from. And that's where, that's the direction they'll go in. So here, let's just say this young man, he did go to his mother first and, and he told her, it's time for me to move away. I want to get my own place. I got to talk to dad about this. And I'm going to move away to that faraway land. And this, this may have come as a shock to his mother. And all of a sudden, her eyes begin to water up. And she says, you don't want to do that. I know we don't always get along. Sometimes we disagree on things. But I tell you what, I love you. And I want you to stay around here. And she went on and on and on. And that for the product, for the son here, oh, he's feeding on that. That's great. I got her right where I want her. I'm really pulling the heartstrings here to get whatever I may need. And so he departs. He leaves her all brokenhearted. She doesn't want her baby to leave. So he goes to the dad. Dad, I've been thinking about moving out and going to that faraway country and making my own money, doing my own thing. And I like to have what's mine, part of my inheritance. And if you don't mind, I like to have that and have it right now. And he's waiting for her his response from his dad thinking I'm going to get him too and the dad sort of kicks around the dirt a little bit and he says okay you want to borrow the truck you want the truck you may help you load things up I help you get there I get some servants to come along and, and help you load things up and get you all moved in and, and maybe it caught the, uh, the young man off guard it seemed like his father was wanting him to get out it's like his father was wanting him to leave and this and that but the thing about it the the father knew that one day, that day was going to come when the son would want to get his own things and move to that own place and, and have his own time, his own freedom and such as that. And the father knew then it would be a test to how well he has trained his son, how to handle the world, how to go about and look out for certain things and how to keep God first. He knew all that day was coming. And here it was going to be a test to what was going to happen for the younger son. Well, in verse 13, and not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. Well, they work it out. You know, the father, he was a provider. He wasn't a, a, a prison warden. He wasn't that. He wasn't one of these individuals that's going to crack the whip every time. He knew that time was coming. So sure enough, when the time was right here, he gets there, all the papers done, everything. Both sons get their share of the inheritance. And the younger son, he goes off and he wastes it. He wastes every penny of it on prodigal living. But yet, uh, the father, yeah, while there, he had his rules. The son was going to follow his rules, but now he's out. He's his own young man. 
What's he going to do? How's he going to handle this? Well, if we know the story, and I think we all know it well, he didn't handle it so well. He went out here, and he thought he had certain friends, and, and those friends weren't really friends. They were just the sort of bums that took every penny he had. And, and when the penny, when the money was gone, his friends were gone, and, and he found himself in the pig pen. Not a good place. Not a good place because there you will, at least he found himself working for nothing, starving to death, eating what the pigs ate. He ate the slop. And that's not very good if you know what slop is. But that's what he ate. And uh, he came to himself. That's good. Again, his father had been telling him some things, teaching him some things over, over the years. And in verse 17, but when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to eat and to spare, and I perish with hunger? Here's his son. He comes to himself. That's great. That's wonderful. He realizes that I had it, I had it, I had it great in my dad's, mom and dad's place. They were great providers. And I'm not doing so well, he says. You see, now he's not really concerned about all those rules. Because he looks now at his household with his mom and dad, not a place of rules, but a place that provided for him. They provided a home over him, a, shell, a roof over his head. They provided him a good warm bed. They provided for him clothing. They provided for him food. All these things, it's now changed. He's seeing his father here as a provider, not as a prison warden anymore, because he's realizing this. And the dad did a good job. The dad takes care of his servants even. And if he takes care of his servants, they have enough to spare. Think what he would do for his own son. He's doing a good job. But it took him a while. But he came around to understand what it was, and realizing that my father loved me. My mom loved me. Understanding that he is now. He understands. Well, the father, you know, he watches and he prays. He's, every day he's wanting his son to come back. But again, he understands I can't go out here and, and pull him back. That wouldn't be right. It's got to be his own choice, and, and the son is making that decision. He kept the, light, the porch light on. He kept the door unlocked for when that son would come around if he would. Well, Luke 20, 15 and verse 20. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. So the son returns. And when he's a great way off, a great way, the father recognizes him. You can do that for people, your children, others you've been around a lot. You see them at a distance, even though you can't see the facial features, you can recognize their, their walk. You can recognize their, their features, the way they do things. And the father recognized that before he did anything else. Because he'd been looking. And he recognized his son. He ran. The older you get, the less you run. I guarantee you I haven't run a whole lot in the last month, six months, year, two years. It's not something I, that I do. The older you get, the less you run, but not this father. He ran. God ran out to him, had compassion on him, fell on his neck, kissing him. You know, he didn't smell very well, like a pig pen. Probably hadn't brushed his teeth in quite a while. That hair is pretty matty, crusty, I'm sure, from all the you know, what you get when you live in a pig pen. Well, the son, all that time he's been walking back, he's been thinking about, what am I going to say? How am I going to say this? He's, he's got it read in his mind, what he's going to say when he first sees his father. And in verse 21, And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Been practicing that. Practicing what he's going to say. But the father doesn't let him finish. I'm sure there's more to it than this. But the father is, he doesn't care about the speech. Him being back shows something that he's changed. What does the father do in verse 22? But the father said to his servants, bring out the best robe and put, on, and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. 
and bring the fatted calf here and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. The father is again providing. Giving what he needed most. He didn't need the robe the most. He didn't need the ring. He didn't need uh, the sandals. He didn't need the fatty calf. The father gave him what he needed most, and that was forgiveness. He gave him mercy. He gave him compassion. All these things and, and grace. He gave him all these things, but he gave him what he needed most. The forgiveness that the son was looking for. All the son wanted to be was just a servant. That's enough. But he put him back right there beside him as a son. Gave him that ring. And that ring showed he had, he had his authority back. He was back. The son knew he messed up. He knew he needed forgiveness. And he got it. And that's the kind of God that we serve. When we mess up, God's there waiting for us to come back. To be forgiven. And put us back where we need to be. You know, we're never too old to come back. And we're never too dirty to come back. We're never too far away to come back. We've all made our mistakes. We have all dined with the pigs before. We've all done that. But God's waiting. And maybe at one time you were out there and you came back. I'm thankful. God's thankful. You're thankful. Or maybe you're still out there. Maybe you're out there. It's been thinking about it. Knowing it takes a lot of it takes a lot of inside of us to say, I'm going to do the right thing. And that's showing that I love God. I'm going to do the right thing. And this morning, if you're not right with our Lord, you know, he's wanting you to come back. He's watching. He's waiting. He's got the robe ready. He's got the, the rings ready. He's got the shoes ready. He's got the great meal prepared ready. He's ready to offer his forgiveness. But he's waiting on you to make that first move. As one that has left our Lord, why don't you come home this morning as the Lord wants you to do? As one that is not a Christian, the Lord wants you to get, back, get with him and become his child so he can begin to provide for you so much, so much he can provide. Many blessings that we'll, we'll never fully understand until we get to heaven. This morning, if you're not a Christian, why not be baptized in the Christ? Put our Lord on, begin your walk with him. Or as one that's out there, why not come home? Do the right thing as we stand and sing our invitation. Why do you wait, dear brother? Why do you tarry so long?